Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. So are you lightheaded? Do you get lightheaded when you go from a lying or a seated to a standing position? Not occasionally, but on a fairly consistent basis. If you get lightheaded, do you get a headache? Do you sometimes feel like you're gonna actually pass out? Um, do you get nauseous? What about exercise intolerance? I mean, can you exercise without getting incredibly fatigued or does even a little bit of exercise completely wipe you out? Does it cause brain fog? Does the exercise cause lightheadedness? Depression, anxiety. Are there any concerns of neurological problems, attention issues? You know, and really more importantly, a combination of these factors. Okay, just an attention problem or an anxiety problem um, may not fit this particular scenario. Have is anybody or a doctor ever suggested that you may have what's called POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome? Basically, when you go from a lying to a standing position, your heart rate increases. If any of this sounds familiar, you may be dealing with what's called a dopamine beta hydroxylase um, deficiency condition. Now, dopamine beta hydroxylase is an enzyme that converts dopamine into norepinephrine. These are what are called catecholamines. And these are important within the nervous system because dopamine is important for attention and focusing, for example. Norepinephrine is too. But norepinephrine also helps to convert to epinephrine or adrenaline for energy production. It also is what helps to maintain that pressure within our vascular system that prevents our blood pressure from getting too low. So when we go from a lying to standing position, we don't pass out. Dysautonomia is sometimes characterized with this as well. And what dysautonomia means is that there's some dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system. But a dopamine beta hydroxylase deficiency condition actually is more prevalent than people realize. About one in 25 people in the United States have a deficiency in the activity of their dopamine beta hydroxylase. That makes up about 4% of the population. Now, it's a spectrum problem. It's not an all or none phenomena. A lot of people have the ability to compensate for low activity, okay, through other metabolic and biochemical means. But the more this system becomes compromised, the more compromised you as an individual can become. And so you can actually test for the activity of dopamine beta hydroxylase. Great Plains Laboratory has a blood test called the dopamine beta hydroxylase activity test. It's looking at the genetic influence on the function of this enzyme. This enzyme can be adversely affected by other things. So Clostridia bacteria, for example, can adversely affect the function of the enzyme or nutritional deficiencies like copper deficiency. But again, the Great Plains test is looking at primarily the genetic influence on the function of this test. It's, so it's, it's an activity test. It's looking at the activity of this test. So if any of this sounds familiar, um, you can go to greatplainslaboratory.com and actually read about this test and the function of this, uh, this enzyme. So again, it's called dopamine beta hydroxylase and a dopamine beta hydroxylase activity test. People with low levels will tend to have much of what I talked about. Now, treatment of it um, is not as well known. Um, there is a medication called droxydopa. Unfortunately, it's not an inexpensive medication. Perhaps as time goes on and this condition becomes more recognized, the price of that medication will go down. But even that, it's an important thing to understand so at least you know what you're dealing with. Um, because people can suffer for years thinking they have adrenal fatigue or they have mitochondrial problems. You know, there's really no answer for their fatigue. Sometimes they're chronic fatigue. And it may just be a deficiency state of dopamine beta hydroxylase. 
Okay, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler, thank you.